Do not forget the works of the Lord. Do not forget the works of the Lord. They tempted and rebelled against God the Most High and kept not his decrees. They turned back and were faithless like their fathers. They were called by their treacherous foe. Do not they angered him with their high places and with their idol roused his jealousy. God heard and was enraged and utterly rejected Israel. Do not forget the words of the Lord. He surrendered his strength into captivity, his glory in the hands of the foe. He abandoned his people to the sword and was enraged against his inheritance. Do not forget the words of the Lord. Jesus and asked him, Lord, if my brother sins against me, how often must I forgive him? As many as seven times? Jesus answered, I say to you, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. This is why the kingdom of heaven will be likened to a king who decided to settle accounts with his servants. When he began the accounting, a debtor was brought before him who owed him a huge amount. Since he had no way of paying him back, his master ordered him to be sold, along with his wife, his children, and all his property in payment of the debt. At that, the servant fell down and did him homage and said, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back in full. Moved with compassion, the master of that servant let him go and forgave him the loan. When that servant had left, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a much smaller amount. He seized him, started to choke him, demanding, pay back what you owe. Falling to his knees, his fellow servant begged him, be patient with me, and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he had the fellow servant put in prison until he paid back the debt. Now, when his fellow servants saw what had happened, they were deeply disturbed and went to their master and reported the whole affair. His master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you your entire debt because you begged me to. Should you not have had pity on your fellow servants as I had pity on you? Then in anger, his master handed him over to the torturers until he should pay back the whole debt. So will my heavenly Father do to you, unless each of you forgives his brother or sister from their heart. When Jesus finished these words, he left Galilee and went to the district of Judea across the Jordan. The Gospel of the Lord. So this gospel adds on to what we were talking about yesterday, about how to deal with difficult situations. Yesterday we came to understand we really need to confront difficult situations. We need to speak up. So if a person is doing wrong or harming you or others, you're supposed to speak up. And they gave a clear way of doing that. One person at a time first, then two people, then establishing all these facts, and then to the whole church, and if they don't respect even the whole church, they don't turn back again, then treat them as they are part of the church. Um, 
So that was the plan yesterday, but now comes this gospel reading on top of it, trying to remind us how many times do we have to forgive? Because that plan takes a lot of patience. You know, this is why most people don't want to go into human resource work or personnel work. It's hugely time consuming to do it properly. And so at some point you just lose your patience and just boom, boom, here's your answer. And or you just kind of cut the person off in one way, shape, or another. And I don't know how Jesus does it. He appears to have more time than me, but he has 70 times seven times. We have to have that kind of patience. But he does so in the context of understanding how many times we are forgiven. And that's what really wakes us up to the situation. So now let's go backwards into that Old Testament reading because it sounds like God is telling them to be confrontational, to tell the people this is what's going to happen. The, the rulers are going to make decisions that affect the lowly people, but the rulers don't pay the price. The lowly people pay the price. And so there's a very confrontational aspect to the whole thing that says you've got to hold these rulers accountable and you have to think for yourself because this affects you more than it affects the ruler, but the ruler is the one making all the decisions. And within that, to say, well, I don't see how these two things go together. Until we slow down and think, well, maybe sometimes I am the ruler. So quickly, it's easy to connect to the worker bees in that scenario, that we are the ones who, you know, that, you know have no power. But in fact, oftentimes we are the people with advantage or power, and we could make a difference, uh, but we let people kind of just be stuck in their situation, or we let them get kind of stuck in, I'll think of this sometimes when I'm going down a road and I see a piece of debris in the road, and, and so there's a piece of me that says, well, I can swerve and avoid it, so I'm going to just keep going. Good luck to the person behind me, you know? And, um, so we could do this on a regular basis. Every once in a while, though, I stop myself and said, what if I was the person who like, was following another car, couldn't see the debris ahead of time, and I'm the one now with a damaged car? And so how often do I stop saying, you know what? There's no one behind me. I've got a couple minutes. Why don't I stop and pick that debris off the road? I have the power to do something about it. And instead of just leaving it, be someone else's problem on the I just deal with it right away. But many times I'll just let it be. You know, good luck to the next person. You know? So there's a lot of times, and this is just one of many possible examples of when we have the power, but do we choose to use our power in order to help that other person, or are we just as likely to just take care of ourselves? And so now that we see that, we realize, wait a minute, I need forgiveness 70 times, seven times. And if I need forgiveness many times in my life, therefore I can try to find a way to spend the time to reconcile the situation with other people and to be able to help mitigate their situation. When we can do that, we'll appreciate that God um, who's all-powerful, um, wishes to have us with him and reconcile to him. The only way for that to happen is he has to forgive us. And so if God has to forgive us seven times, seven times, and he can be with us, how much more can we build the kingdom of God by passing that forgiveness on to others as well? Let us now stand to offer our prayers to the Lord. Let us pray for our world around us, especially those who are truly powerless, that they will uh, be cared for by people who are able to think outside of themselves and think of others. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray for people with power, uh, that we will always reflect on um, the gift that is only given to us and to realize how God wants us to use that gift today. 
Let us praise the Lord. Lord Let us pray for our church, especially all of our leaders, the Pope, our bishops, clergy, and lay leaders, that we will be nourished with the Holy Spirit and filled with God's zeal. Let us praise the Lord. Lord Let us pray for all those who are sick, uh, that they will be cared for and visited one way or another during this COVID-19. Let us praise the Lord. Lord Let us pray for the construction workers out front of our building, as well as all people who do dangerous jobs, uh, that they will be safe in their work. Let us praise the Lord. Lord Let We pray for the special intention of this Mass, for the repose of the soul of Al Lucas, and for his long history with the St. Vincent de Paul Conference. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And again, this is the five-year anniversary of Father Mike Stern uh, passing away, that he will be enjoying the heavenly kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, give us everything we need. Help us to understand the many ways that you're answering our prayers, that we can cooperate with your love and your grace. We ask this through Christ, our Lord. Take this, all of you, and drink from it. 
For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, this bread of life and this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. We humbly pray that partaking in this body and blood of Christ, we will be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Jerome, our Bishop, and all the leaders of the church. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. We remember especially Al and all those who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face and have mercy on us all, that with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, and Joseph, her spouse, all the apostles and saints, including Hippolytus and Pontian, and all who have pleased you throughout the ages, may we merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, to praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. After all of us who are called the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
and Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as though you were already there. And then I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. O oh Lord, may the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us and confirm us in the light of your truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, people are asking um, this, uh, what, how are we handling August 15th this year? Because it lands on Saturday, which is the feast day of the Assumption of Mary into heaven. Because it's not a holy day of obligation, there were no masses here. But that doesn't mean you might want to keep up your own prayers anyway. We really truly changed over to a day of celebrating Mary to make sure you pray the rosary or to do something else to really celebrate the day. If you don't want to leave that behind, um, to me, quite honestly, it's one of the days I really connect with the most throughout the year for because you're these days. And so um, it's good for us to be able to keep up our prayer lives. The Lord be with you. 